hey, I think I maybe need some help. I'm, uh, I can't catch my breath. I'm, I'm in the creek, and I'm gonna try and climb out. I, uh, I just, if I don't make it, I'm in the creek, so. I don't know if I can make it out. I don't know, I'm either having a heart attack or it's an anxiety. I feel like I'm dying. My heart hurts and it's coming out of my chest. And I feel like I'm gonna drop dead. Well, that was super, super disappointing. Found the perfect spot, got everything set up. All of a sudden I felt I think what it was maybe an anxiety attack. So I just did this block in and um, I decided that I didn't want to let myself get defeated by that panic attack. And I'm probably gonna go back and do a plein air, but I've taken a study uh, photo of it. And I thought, you know, I'm already in love with this scene and I know that I want to do it. And so went out and I got this big canvas this is a uh, 24 by 20 and um, I just did this kind of first layer just uh, just to get it blocked in and then I'm planning on I think tomorrow probably start applying color so I feel good about this it only took me about maybe an hour so not too bad a little bit of art but definitely making some progress yeah hey scott how's Hello. it going man good how are you i'm good thanks for uh thanks for doing this man i really appreciate it yeah no worries i like th it's fun doing interviews and talking with people this year i decided like okay i'm gonna do art every day and uh i did like the first month and i started feeling like all proud of myself and then i went like wait a second scott is like the man you know like however <laughs> However, however, like professional, I feel like I'll get into a groove. I'm like, this dude's done at least 190 days so far, you know? And so I was like, I just have to talk to you about this because you're, you're kind of on another level right now. Yeah, um, cool. What made you, what made you like motivated you to, to start this project? I have a full-time job right now and I need to get a collection of paintings together, but I kept kicking the can down the road basically. I would paint, I would try to wait until I had like a block of time to paint. And um, the my output was not where I needed it to be. I would like to eventually do this as like a career if possible. If it doesn't work out, I'm okay with it, but I want to make sure that I'm putting in like my best effort. 120 days. Check it out. Um started this january 1 wanted to try to do our every single day <clears throat> um i recorded a video up here where i covered that whole first month if you want to see that but basically at the beginning of the year i really felt kind of disillusioned discouraged uh disappointed pretty much all those words that start with d and i didn't feel like doing art and I really wasn't doing a whole lot of art. And so I wanted to get back into a daily routine and kind of just pretend like I did love it. Uh, pretend like I was enjoying it. Um, sort of get the feelings out of the way and, uh, and just start working every day. Today I want to try to turn this sketch that I did in gouache um, the other day, plein air, and try doing it in oil paint to uh, just see what that process is like. And I'm gonna try to really just use this sketch as the reference, at least for as long as possible. And then I might maybe bust out the um, photo reference possibly, but I'm gonna really try to go from this. And this is something I've never really done before. So I'm gonna try and see just how that goes. I'm gonna be using the same palette that I used before. So ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and titanium white. And I'm gonna free mix, so a lot of times I will pre-mix my colors and get a lot of different values, but I just wanna try and capture that same 
sort of sketchy look in this painting. So we'll give that a go. So I'm gonna try and kind of sketch from this a little bit. And um, okay, I'm using this big uh, two inch house painting brush to try and get in my sky. And it's just gonna be kind of the most effective thing. fallacy that we tell ourselves is that like oh i'm not doing art because i don't have enough time i'm going to tell you a story i quit my job and it was actually negotiated at my work to go down to four days a week and just take fridays off so i could start this other business or whatever and everybody was cool with it and the very first day that i had the first friday off i basically um wasted the entire day messing around on facebook more time for a lot of people is not going to help if you're not disciplined. You really need to focus on what are the key things that you need to do. So if I want to be a painter, I need to make paintings. Yeah. So I need to set aside that time for making paintings. Everything else is auxiliary. And one of the things that um, I learned after that first month was the more that I did this, the more I really started to build more momentum and get, uh, I started to enjoy it more. I started to do it more. And so I took some key lessons from that to apply into these next few months which was to try to schedule some deep work days where I would just work all day long, to try to um, streamline my processes. So it's an overcast day and I kind of want to, kind of want to paint this scene here of this house, the street scene, the cars, the trees. So we're going to go for something like that. Yeah, hey, good. How are you doing? Taking picture or drawing? Uh, drawing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it started already? I'm just getting just getting started, so it's kind of an interesting little street scene. I'm trying to do art every day, really? and so uh, <laughs> had to get out. It's not great weather or anything, but ha awesome. had to do something. <laughs> this is Nebraska. I got to get used to it. Yeah. I, I was at home. I just had to feel so boring. Yeah. You know, I just say, hey. Because usually I walk, I go around, I live here on California Street. Yeah. I uh, I do five miles. Wow, I good for you. I do my equipment, my bike, but I, I don't want to do it. Yeah, it's nice to be outside. Yeah, There's just something it's, about it. Yeah. It's so boring when you don't, you don't see nobody around. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> so are you uh, are you uh, drawing a, a house here? Or? Yeah, that greenhouse right there. A green? Yeah. And what do you share all your work? I have my cousin, she's up to see. Oh, cool. Yes. What's her name? She moved to uh, Kesha. She graduated from, uh, from you know. Okay, cool. Yeah, Jackson. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, her, her name is uh, Kesha Jackson. Jackson, okay. Uh, and she did in downtown before, you know. Yes. She showed everything there. And, yeah. That's awesome. That's it. Don't come by. Hi. Yeah, I'm yeah. 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 painting the street scene right here. Awesome. It was nice to meet you. Not the nicest weather today, but it is a little chilly. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not too really cool. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it gets colder for sure. It gets colder for sure. Yeah, you gotta get. Are those oils? Yeah, 
yeah, I'm just doing three colors today. So um, everything's so muted anyways, you know, for this time of year, you don't need too many colors. So, but well, here's where I'm going to stop right here. Pretty doggone cold. So I think we'll just we'll roll with that for now. Well, I just recorded a video explaining how frustrated I am and I literally became partially unhinged because um, I just got done painting and it was fun. I filmed and everything. I got to talk to a lot of people, but I really underestimated how cold it was and uh, my hands and feet went numb and it really turned from, I think, being kind of fun and cool and adventurous, um, like just get out there and do it into something that really was really unpleasant, not fun, physically felt uh, un not great about it. And then on the way back, somehow my mineral spirits spilled uh, in my backpack and like soaked through the backpack and into my jacket. So my jacket's like covered in mineral spirits and it got into my shirt <laughs> and it spilled out on my floor and I got paint all over me and that's just really frustrating. It's really, really frustrating. So technically, yeah, I got out there and I painted today. I guess that I learned some stuff, but man, uh, I'm not feeling super good about it right now. I don't know. I gotta go clean up. All it is is mineral spirits that soak through. It's February 13th, um, about halfway done with second month of making art every day. I would say that in some ways there's some marginal improvements from last month in that I'm um, being a little bit more proactive about getting out doing plein air, especially on like a gorgeous day like today. I have, you know, responsibilities and things that I need to work on other than just art. And it just seems like the last couple of weeks have been really high on draining the time and resources uh, in terms of just having to do other life stuff. So I've kind of been having to work around that. One thing that I underestimated this month as I'm trying to be prepared and try to implement, you know, one of the other rules or lessons from January was that I need to have something in the studio ready to go. And um, I thought, you know, I can, I, I have a studio painting I've been working on, so that's been good, but I also kind of wanted to break from it. And so um, I also got this idea watching a plein air live um, interview with Patrick Okrasinski, uh, also on YouTube, super amazing painter, amazing plein air artist. Um, and in his interview for the podcast, he talked about how one of the ways that he got good, and he's super good, was doing master copies. Um, and so I spent so much time. I was like, that's a great idea. You can just have a master copy going. Uh, up on the easel and I work on it you know when you do have 15 minutes when you do have 20 minutes um even when you have five minutes you know so um wanting to do that what I underestimated was how difficult it would be to actually like find a painting that I wanted to do a master copy of and I just went down a deep dive of looking at photos on the Met in New York City. Okay, dog's going crazy, hold on. Some of the other lessons I learned in January that I still have to apply is um, thinking about like a hardcore deep work session. Um, I wanna plan that and put on the schedule and um, try to paint for at least four hours, maybe longer. Um, I would say somewhere between four and uh, eight hours is something that I would like to do in my head. Um, and I haven't done that for a long, long time. And so that's something that I wanna try and do this month, but I haven't planned it, I haven't scheduled it. Um, and so I need to get on that. One of the other things that I wanted to do was um, to at least match, if not surpass what I've done with plein air painting and so um, I have plein air painted once 
um, but if I'm going to match it, I need to do it a second time. And if I'm going to surpass it, I need to do it a third time. And so uh, we're talking about at least two more uh, plein air sessions in the next two weeks, um, which is doable. But uh, I, need to, I need to make that happen as well. So I accidentally came to work a half hour early. I got my schedule mixed up, so I've got 30 minutes to kill. And of course, I don't have any art supplies with me at all so um we have a whiteboard i guess maybe i'll maybe i'll try to use the whiteboard but uh here's a lesson always have a sketchbook with you There's, you need to create the least amount of friction between you and whatever you're doing, what, whether that's making art every day or streaming every day or whatever, you need to make it so that there's the least amount of friction. With that being said, that's going to completely change upon everybody's different context, right? Like if you have kids that are, you, if, like I could just leave my paints out here if it was finally paints out. I could just leave my paints and brushes out here and no one's going to touch them except for me. Um, if I have kids come in here, obviously that's going to make a big difference, right? right? If I have a cat that's going to jump up on my desk, that I got to start putting stuff away. Right. So it's just like, how, but how can I streamline that whole process so that so that everything is there? And then plus two, you just you just I just started, and then now that I'm just about two hundred days into it, it's um, I make adjustments. So it's February eighteenth, and. Uh... I started this studio scene yesterday. Um, it's from that creek scene um, where I had the panic attack and got chased away from doing it. So I decided to, I was just really motivated to do that scene and I don't know, I just felt excited about it. So started to go for it yesterday and did about two hours on it, uh, which it's, I don't know. I feel like I could have gotten more done in two hours, but that's all I got done. So today it's Sunday. I just got back from church and I don't want to spend the whole day working. So I probably only want to do maybe an hour today or even maybe less than that. Um, but I just want to chip away at it. And to me, part of doing art every day is about, you know, doing as much as you can when you can. And I think like rest is a part of that too. So I want to do a little bit to keep the streak alive, but I don't want to do too much that it overtakes my day. I want to be able to rest and relax today and read some books and just hang out. So we'll do a little bit on this today and then we'll keep going. Good morning. It's February 22nd and um, today is going to be my big work day. Yay! Uh, last month I talked about um, how I had to make like a really big push on a music deadline that I had and I was thinking like man I never do that really for art unless I have a commission but I want to actually like get that done today so um, this month I was like what if I what I thought what if I take one day a month and I do like a really extended uh, long work session um, to just get a lot of stuff done and you know, act with that relentless sense of urgency. So today is that day. Um, I'm not gonna do anything too insane, but I would say like on average, I kind of paint between, you know, on a, a range of on the low end, 15 minutes, on the long end, hour, hour and a half, I think. So I wanna really extend that out and I'm gonna try and do four hours today so that I'm not dead before I work but, uh, you know, on my real job. But I want to um, try to push that and just see what I can get done as if it were a commission and see what I can get done with a little bit more extended time uh, put into this. So we're gonna go for that, see what that feels like. And you know, if it's successful, maybe we could keep building that out um, and, you know, do one or two every month. I don't know, we'll see what happens. So let's see how this goes. Um, see if I can actually like stay in the zone for four hours. I think I'm gonna try doing the Pomodoro technique, which is what I did when I was composing uh, in January, um, where basically you'll work for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break. And then you do that, I think for an hour or two hours, I think two hours, and then you take like a 15 minute break or something like that. And then you repeat, rinse and repeat. 
So I think I'm gonna try that technique just to kind of intersperse some breaks so that you can get a drink of water or go to the bathroom, maybe kind of shut your brain down for a moment and then jump back into deep work. I think some other things I'm gonna play around with doing is maybe trying to also caffeinate and uh, maybe listen to some music. So classical, electronic, I'm not sure. We'll see, let's get into it. First half hour down, uh, not a lot done. Just kind of working on mixing up my colors and also trying to fix that focal point. I still think it's too saturated and probably a little bit too bright, so we'll keep chipping away. One hour down, um, starting to put in some of the details of the leaves, which I feel like is going pretty good, although I, mean, I felt like I needed more dark, so I'm starting to kind of stipple and put in kind of a push and pull between darks and lights, but um, I'm pleased with how the texture is starting to build up. So we'll see how that goes and uh, we'll keep going. Feel good. Decided to make a couple of changes. I'm sitting on a chair right now so that I'll have a little bit more longevity. And uh, I really feel like I'm getting into a groove, which is awesome. We're at an hour and a half. I'm a little hungry, so I'm gonna get a quick snack. I'm on my five minute break and then we'll keep going. Hit two hours soon. Two hours. At two hours, I'm gonna take a 15 minute break, um, but I'm really, I'm feeling it, man. I'm feeling, I'm loving this. Uh, probably take my dog out yeah, and uh, then we'll get back to it. Okay, so here we are after three hours of work and I'll just flash up on the screen what uh, it looked like before I started. And here's what it looks like now. So gotten some decent work done on creating like some texture and putting some highlights over the darks. Um, so I like that. I think my next thing, I'm feeling like the sky is a little bit washed out and I put it in relatively thin and you can still see some of the underdrawing. And I just wanna fix and smooth out that gradient. So I think I'm gonna mix up some sky blues and do another pass on the sky. So that was really, really nice. Um, I did the math and it seems like basically the amount of work that I got done today is probably about the same amount of work that I would get done in a week and maybe a little bit more. So that's pretty incredible. I also feel like one of the reasons why it might be a little bit more is because um, One of the reasons why I think it might be a little bit more is just because you're working for an extended period of time, you go into kind of a deeper work mode. And I really loved doing that. I really loved just being fully engaged, the schedule is cleared, 
the cell phone's turned off, I'm not being distracted with multiple tasks or moving from this thing to that thing. I'm all in on painting. I would say like in terms of energy expenditure, mental and physical, it definitely helped to sit on a chair. Um, I feel like I could do more, but I'm also really, really tired today. Um, after that, after that four hour bout. So I think like being effective, I'd probably only be effective maybe for that fifth hour. I think if I did it longer than that, I would maybe need to take more breaks or space it out throughout a day. Um, but I think I definitely want to try that. I want to try stretching it a little bit um, next time. And I even feel like, to be honest, doing four hours um, is maybe even something I could do. Doing a long work day like this is something I could even do maybe more than once a month. Um, to be honest, like this four hour, <laughs> it's a four hour work day, but not really because I have other things I gotta do. My real job and I need to work out, I need to take care of take care of this guy, oops. <laughs> and um, yeah, I need to take care of Harry. I gotta, family obligations, you know, just parts, part of life. And so I got to manage all of that. And yet, you know, taking some time to be fully invested in painting was really, really nice. And in a way I feel like, man, it would be great if I could do this every day. It would, that would just be amazing. So maybe that's a stretch goal for us that someday I can do that. It's such a different mindset because I'm so used to painting, uh, finishing the painting in one go and, um, you know, doing plein air painting, having to paint fast and making these snap decisions. And one thing that I think is just kind of an interesting experience with this is that um, everything is so much more slowed down. Um, and I, because I'm in the studio, which normally, you know, I don't, I don't have that, painting in the studio doesn't have an appeal to me. Um, they're just being outdoors and uh, looking at something right in front of you and capturing that that immediacy, that experience of of reality is uh, just so superior to me. Um, but uh, there's something that's unique about this where because you're slowing down and you have time to stop and think, and adjust and fix your mistakes on the fly and try something and see if it works and iterate and all of that goes into one painting um, and to me that's just really an interesting process that uh i've never i've never experienced before obviously today is like an out of this world weather day and i wish i was plein air painting right now i wish that i had I wish that I had time to uh, to do both, um, but you got to pick and choose. And uh, but I'm glad that I I'm glad that I picked on this. And it, maybe that's something that I could try next time, is to take like a whole day and plan on spending four or five hours. I think four hours is the most that I've ever spent on a plein air painting um, in one go, uh, and that was when I was at a plein air event. Um, but I, I, one thing I do want to try sometime, if the weather is consistent, is to do like two consecutive days. I think that that would be really interesting. So we'll see. Um, maybe that's something that I can do later this month. Um, and, you know, especially maybe painting something larger. I'm not sure. But uh, that would be interesting to try for sure. After working on this big landscape painting for a while, um, I kind of set it aside and spent some time thinking about it. And um, I realized that I felt like it needed more at the focal point. And that's where I got this idea to put a deer, a buck deer at the focal point. And so I kind of went down this whole rabbit hole of trying to locate and find a good resource on deer anatomy and I ended up going to one of the local community colleges to find a book from the, uh, I think 1905 
uh, that had artist renderings of uh, deer's skeletal systems and musculature systems. And then I proceeded to take that as reference and make a sculpture. And um, my goal is now through kind of learning how to do the sculpture and working on it, that took like a whole week, um, maybe like two weeks. Checking out these tools, and it looks like there's quite a bit of stuff. Um, I'm not even honestly like I really was interested in this little hand drill. There's been many times where uh, I've wanted to drill something, and what I was thinking is that it would be useful to put this on a base because the feet are not that great. So I got this piece of board and I'm thinking like I might drill some holes into that for the wire, the armature wires that fit into. I'm not gonna glue it because I do want to be able to remove this guy, but I'm thinking about doing something like this just to give it like a little bit more firm foundation. I also wanted a tool to be able to pull off some clay off of it and not just be putting clay on but to be putting, pulling some clay off as well. So I think, hmm. I think we'll try using this thing, even though it's like a little bit big. And then, you know, there's all these like little other tools with bits and bobs. Um, I also could see myself Probably like using this to uh, get into some crevices. And this is kind of almost like an X-Acto knife arrowhead type deal. So I think that I could use that to uh, pull some clay off. And then I'm kind of excited by these guys. This thing here, um, this thing here has kind of got like some interesting things that I think I could use to, uh, to texture it. And likewise, these brushes, I don't really know what these are for, but I could see myself making kind of some fur textures with that. So yeah, we'll see. interesting because sculpting feels very much like painting it's different when I when I'm painting I'm looking at a three-dimensional object and I'm trying to figure out how to conform it to a two-dimensional object but what I'm doing right now with this sculpting is I'm looking at you know this book photo references of like a two-dimensional object and trying to convert it into a three-dimensional object. So it feels like the same process, but coming at it from another dimension, pun intended, I guess. <laughs> I have no idea. But yeah, that is like something that's totally freaky, just as like a mental sensation. And like several times today, like I've been working on this off and on and I need to go to bed 
I feel bad because I would like to keep working on it. But um, several times today I was thinking about how much fun it is, even though it's like a little bit frustrating because I don't quite know what I'm doing. But like these moments when it starts to like sort of emerge and I'm like, yes, I'm headed in the right direction. This is it. And like I look over at my table and I see this like little statuette of a deer. I'm like, that is so cool. And I feel like I just want to do this all the time. So it's really fun. It's really fun. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm enjoying it. I think in a lot of ways, January was spent trying to find things to do, find productive outlets and things to make sure that I could like start to ramp up this habit. But I think like in February, I almost created too many projects or, you know, I think because of inexperience and rustiness, it was really like kind of difficult to really feel out like how long some of these projects would take. I think in a way I maybe almost like started too many projects and don't get me wrong. I think that it's actually good to have quite a variety of projects so that you're not thinking like, what am I going to do? Right. And so really over the past, two months I've been, you know, creating studio pieces, going out and doing plein air, uh, learning how to plan, um, you know, in advance for plein air times, for studio times, for long work days. I think um, starting a master copy, taking a plein air sketch, turning it into a studio piece, all of those things have been beneficial learning to bring a sketchbook with me when I go to work and even, you know, when I don't have a sketchbook with me, planning on just using art supplies that I have with me. I think all those things are good so that I never feel like I don't have anything to do. But I think looking forward uh, into the coming months, I think that I want to now go from this sort of scattered approach of almost unlimited options to perhaps focusing on a a more narrow band of things to do so that I actually finish projects. And I know for me personally, that's something that I struggle with. I'm very good at like coming up with great ideas. I come up with a lot of ideas, Um, but I think like it's very easy for me to almost like kind of get bored. Um, and, And that's where I think it's beneficial to have multiple things. I just think that you can take it too far. You have too many things and then you never finish anything. And so I think I maybe want to kind of find that middle ground going forward and just, and have multiple things that I can do. So I have some variety, but not too much variety. So maybe just kind of narrowing it a bit and maybe even just setting some goals like, okay, dude, even though this is going to get hard and boring and long, you need to finish this studio painting or you need to finish this master copy and making myself work on something you know several days in a row I, I i could see that as like a rule for myself not necessarily something that everybody would have to do but saying like okay when you work on something you need to at least work on it two days in a row or three days in a row before you can switch to doing a plein air sketch or working on a deer sculpture or something like that um i think that if you're i think my biggest thing would be to say that if you're doing it if you're doing something, anything every day, because someone else told you that it was a good idea to do it, that is probably in some ways a recipe for disaster eventually, mm. obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 will to do it has to be intrinsic. It has to come within you. I don't think that you can, um, you I can't, I can't tell you what to do to make you do art every day. Right. You have to be the one that tells that to yourself. Because there's, like I said, there's going to be something that happens. Um, there's going to be a good reason to not do it every single day. As I sit here at 120 days, I can't help but feel super discouraged and in a way back where I started from. Uh, one of the reasons for that is um, that over these last 120 days, I had a couple little instances of, of getting under the weather, as we all do. Uh, But the last uh, few weeks, if you can't tell from the sound of my voice, the last few weeks were a little bit out of the ordinary. And um, I was actually in bed for about 15 days. I feel like 
just discouraged by that. Um, you know, I wish that it didn't happen and there's not a whole lot that I could do about it. And so in a way, like, you know, I kind of reverted back to this sketchbook, just doing, you know, short five minute pencil sketches of Harry, my dog, who's lying right over here and, um, of my hands and of my feet. And, um, you know, before that, I had been doing a lot of these like gouache sketches and urban sketches, and I had just explored a lot of awesome areas, and I felt like I was getting better at my art, but then sort of this illness kind of intervened, and plus a couple other just life events of, of stress and um, difficulty and just things pulling you in a million directions. And so where I've sort of ended up kind of reverting, I would say falling off the wagon, um, not really painting, not really doing art that's too satisfying and kind of just going through the motions. And as much as like I am committed to keeping my streak alive and making sure that I do art every day, sort of on the basis that I've worked very hard to get to this point and um, I have made decisions in my life that art is important to me, I'm just supremely dissatisfied and disappointed when I look at the painting on my easel and I see that it's unfinished, when I think about all the projects I've started but I haven't completed, when I when I think like, you know, I really don't love pencil sketching and I'm not excited necessarily to sketch my hands and feet or just whatever's in my living room, but that sort of feels like all I have energy for. Um, that's all I have time for. And maybe there's an argument to be said, like that's the best that I can do, but I'm just disappointed by that. I'm disappointed and I'm discouraged by it. And um, when I was super productive in March, I felt, in part of April, I felt so excited and I really was enjoying that process. You know, I started these monochromatic gouache sketches. They were originally, part of my plan was just to incorporate a little bit of sketching in the morning with my coffee. And so uh, the game plan was to just spend like, 10 minutes on it, and I even had a video recently why 10 minute sketches are better than three hour sessions. And I was enjoying that so much that those 10 minute sessions started to grow out into 20 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute. I think I had even sort of told myself like, this isn't real plein air, but you know, once you're doing it for like an hour plus, which I was doing because I was enjoying it so much and wanted to add more details and it really did turn into a plein air painting session, you know, and these like little sketches were starting to turn into more art and it was triggering more experiments that I wanted to run and I started experimenting with different colors and different brushes and different surfaces and trying to streamline that, my palette system and what colors I was using and even how I film it. There's some of the stuff that you guys don't necessarily see, but like trying to make it just easier to do this. And, you know, part of, I think, you know, this whole YouTube channel, and my art education kind of came up together. I, I saw a lot of artists that I really admired where they just documented their process, and that's even why I'm making this video here. Um, not necessarily to like explicitly teach you guys or have like a tutorial, but I, you know, I kind of want to get back to what I originally wanted to do, which was to just bring people along onto the journey and just kind of document my process and my journey. And to me, that is cool. I really love seeing that in other people's work and I love doing it myself. But having this illness and having like everything in my ske schedule and my routine just completely stop and then having to kind of revert back to just doing the bare minimum and kind of limping along on that, but I really just haven't been enjoying it. And so not even even like not enjoying that process very much, but also just feeling myself becoming more demotivated as well. And so I'm sort of at a point where I'm not quite sure what the answer is. Like, do you just push through? Do you just keep doing it? Do you take a break? Do you try to think like, what are the sorts of things? I mean, as I'm saying this out loud, I feel like I probably should think about what would be the sort of things that would make me enjoy it again. Um, I think spending more time would make me enjoy it more. I think working on more paintings and less drawings, even though I know I need to work on those drawing skills to get better. Um, and maybe I should like 
plan on that being a part of my weekly schedule, maybe once or twice a week. Okay, yeah, I am going to do some drawing. Or, but um, I really enjoy the painting. I enjoy being outside. Um, I want to finish some of these projects I've started. Um, but it is just demoralizing and discouraging to feel like I don't have energy for it and to feel like I don't have time for it because I missed a lot of work. I'm having to like kind of make up a lot of that, that work that I missed. So my schedule is even more tight now than it is. And some other things have taken my attention. And when you feel like, oh, you don't enjoy it, I think it really puts a big question mark on what are you going to do? You know, I don't, I don't like quitting stuff. I don't believe in quitting. Um, I don't want to put that label on myself as somebody who quits when something gets hard or when something's unpleasant. But I also acknowledge like sometimes there's a reasonable time to quit. And I think that's sort of the big question that started this whole process is when you're not enjoying it, you're not getting better and you don't have any motivation should you just quit? And I feel like that's the question that's in front of me right now. And I don't know how to answer it. I think it also, I think that like doing it every day also helps shift your mindset to you realizing that you are that type of person that does that thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I'm the type of person that does the art, not like I'm not like when it's convenient, but just in just blanket statement. I think essentially there's a conflict between determining how we act and what we do on the basis of our inner selves, how we feel and our perceptions versus determining um, how we act and what we do on something else, perhaps something external. Um, and I think that's sort of the question that lies before me because if I go just off of how I feel, how my perceptions are right now, then obviously I'll stop. But as we kind of established at the beginning of the video, when I changed how I acted back on January 1, it changed how I feel. And I think most of us can acknowledge that how you feel is not always 100% trustworthy although it's not totally irrelevant either. I think that's sort of what makes it complex because sometimes our feelings lie to us. They're transitory. They come and go, they change. And so if I just acted on the basis of how I felt, I would, I would just stop until I felt like starting again. And then I would start until I felt like stopping again. And who knows if like that's actually good or not. Maybe it is. Unless, you know, I'm to assume that my feelings would last forever, which almost certainly that's not the case. And I mean, I wouldn't know until they changed. How long would I have to wait to confirm that, you know, a feeling was permanent? So on the other hand, what I was saying is if you want to not act according to your feelings, but according to some external principles, I feel like that's difficult for me to do in the context of making art. You know, if you talk about maintaining our responsibilities, that sort of becomes a no-brainer to a certain extent. You have to manage your responsibilities irrespective of how you feel. But what's my responsibility to being creative? Which is that sometimes I even feel like it's more or less just a glorified hobby, right? Maybe it's not, that's on my worst day. But how do you navigate that? If you're gonna choose to not work according to the principle of just allowing your feelings and perceptions to dictate if what you're doing is good or not, or what you should do. How do you determine what you should do any other way? 
I think that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out. What's my actual responsibility? Obviously, I feel to a certain extent that there's a responsibility to you guys who watch my videos and maybe my family and friends who think of me as an artist. You know, I have a clear-cut responsibility if someone hires me or commissions me. But in lieu of those things, when you have to consider maybe what's your responsibility to yourself, as someone who has ability, skill, that's hard earned, time invested, money invested, what's my responsibility to honor that? I gotta figure that out. If you guys um, enjoyed some of the clips with my interview with Scott, that was legitimately one of the highlights of my year so far. He's got a lot of wisdom, intelligence. He's a fantastic artist. So I'm posting that whole conversation if you guys wanna watch that here. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend checking out his channels, his live streams. Um, he's doing incredible work. And for all of you who are coming along on this journey with me, I really appreciate your your kindness and your insight. And I really do believe you have a voice that matters. So go be creative. And I'll try to do the same. I'll see you next time.